G'day Guardians, Rogi here, back at you with another Grandmaster Guide. This time featuring everyone's favourite AI, Failsafe, in the Exodus Crash. The Exodus Crash holds a special place in my heart, as it was the first Grandmaster I ever completed back in Season of the Hunt. It was a janky as heck run, all three of us using Lament to melt the final boss in that last room, cycling between Well and Bubble just to stay alive. I think I was running some weird top tree void worm husk crown loadout. Safe to say it was a miracle we got the clear. Fast forward to today, we got a much more refined loadout. Myself, as always, using bottom tree void hunter with Omnioculus, while Matt and Cryptic both ran middle tree solar warlock, Matt with Boots of the Assembler, and Cryptic with Phoenix Protocol. As for weapons, I was using Tiger Spite with Overflow and Frenzy for the Anti-Barrier Champions, Cartesian Coordinate with Feeding Frenzy and High Impact Reserves, using that for DPS and of course to quickly proc Particle Deconstruction, and finally in my Heavy Weapon slot, Reed's Regret with Triple Tap and Vorpal Weapon. This is crucial for taking out those champions quickly. Matt was feeling extra bold, taking in a double special ammo loadout in the form of Blinding Ignition Code and Divinity. Divinity has really been pulling its weight this Grandmaster season, stacking with Particle Deconstruction and of course stunning those overloads. Taking down champions has never been easier. For his heavy slot, a cheeky little Apex Predator with tracking and auto-loading. Cryptic, having watched a great top 5 auto rifles for Grandmaster video, was also rocking a Tiger Spite with Overflow and Frenzy. He had the Tiku's Divination on just as a backup for overloads, and in the heavy slot, Reed's Regret for that extra champion damage and of course taking up the boss. Loadouts locked in, let's talk strategy. As you can see by now, we've been stealthing our way through the first section of the strike, hitting all the arc pulses along the way. After the first five, we split up, Cryptic and Matt pushing forward while I stealth through and grab the second set of five pulses. A very boring but safe way to ensure you don't get cleaned up by any of the vandals and pikes along the way. We tried a few different ways to optimize taking out that first overload champion, but due to the energy field relying on the entire wave being cleared, the best way we landed on was taking them out front to back. The next Overload Champion is easy enough to take down. <laughs> Honestly, your teammate shooting the Trip Mines pose a bigger threat than he does. Yeah, that's good. Way more efficient. Funnily enough, funnily enough it's actually not. Oh. A handful of dregs and another lonely Overload, and then it's on to the Protect Ghost Room. This room can get overwhelming real quick if you do not deal with the Overloads right away. We would start the encounter, send off Ghost, put down our first well, and begin targeting the first Overload in sight. Make sure your Divinity player is calling out which Overload to focus so you can maximize your burst damage. Throughout the first part, you'll be getting swarmed by melee wretches and overcharged shanks. Just stick to your well and you'll be fine. Take down those four Overload champions and resume defending Ghost. If things ever get out of control, you can backpedal out of the hallway entrance and wait for your cooldowns to start again. This next part is crucial, as not only will it save you a lot of time, it will save you dealing with the headache of two anti-barrier servitors at once. Once you hit 50% on the progress meter, two barrier servitors will float down from the back of the room. As they are floating down, try to quickly pick one off, and if you are really on point, you might even be able to get that second one as well. Deal with the next wave of overcharged shanks, then turn your attention to the remaining servitor. You want to take it down quickly, because if you've been standing on that capture zone, get ready for another four overloads. We began to run pretty low on Divinity Ammo right about now, so having Cryptic with TQ's Divination was a great little backup to have for dealing with those overload champions. But as you can see, it's so much more difficult taking out these champions quickly without a Divinity. Speaking of the ammo economy, I actually really like and highly recommend running Special Finisher if you are doing something like Bottom Tree Void Hunter. The super I find just doesn't really have a place in most encounters in Grand Master, and I'd much rather have myself a full Cartesian Coordinate and my Div player a full Clip of Divinity. You know you are getting close to finishing this encounter when the two Solar Shielded Heavy Shanks arrive. Now these guys don't really pose much of a threat, just so continue to focus on any remaining overloads finish progressing ghost scan and move on to the next section. Another five arc pulses to walk through, pretty straightforward, avoid the pikes and hope you're enjoying an encounter that's already in progress. You might have some players completing a public event there so they can take some of the aggro and deal with the fallen for you. 
In this run, we actually had one of the Vex public events begin to take place. So a lot of the Fallen actually retargeted and started shooting at the Vex, which brought us a lot of breathing room. After picking up the fifth pulse, Sparrow all the way through to the very edge of the map. Watch out for the few dregs up to your left and any stray shots coming overhead from the skiff. Pick a leg for your fire team to focus on. Once destroyed, move up to the entrance to the Exodus and unload on the crit spot. One thing you should always be doing when encountering targets you really want to take down quickly is throwing out a burst of that Cartesian coordinate. Being that rapid fire frame, it's so easy to shoot off five fully charged shots. This will be able to get you full stacks of your particle deconstruction, swap over to Reed's Regret to maximize your damage output. With the spider tank fell, the weird Vex Minotaur just kind of wanders off. We don't need to worry about him. Onwards, as the late Cade 6 would say. Once into the ruined remains of the Exodus, you'll encounter the last overload champion of the strike. Quickly dispose of this intruder and make your way to the boss room. Now, we just stealth our way up to the top. This will save you on time and ammo. And so we arrive at the electrified final encounter. Thavix the coward. I mean, Thavix the deprived. We positioned ourselves to the back left of the room, so there's a nice little hidey hole. You can tactically position yourself to avoid being overrun. Now, I know what you're thinking. Rogi, didn't you just call Thavix a coward for running away, but now you're hiding behind a wall, begging for your warlocks to heal you? To which I say, nah-uh. Once the boss appears, have your divinity player begin to laser him and unleash as much DPS as you can put out. He'll vanish and reappear at a different location. Rinse and repeat. Once you hit a certain damage threshold, he'll vanish until you've cleared out all the overcharged shanks. While all this is happening, you'll be swarmed by spear-wielding wretches, all fighting to be the one to take out a guardian and get that extra dose of ether. Cycle your wells here as you'll be taking arc damage the entire time until you finally cleared out all the adds. Upon taking out the final ad, Thavix will reappear, doing so before any of the other adds, giving you ample time to layer on the damage and then once again vanishing from sight. As the next wave of adds slowly begins to appear, you'll see they've brought company, this time in the form of two barrier servitors. Clear out any other adds to your left before focusing on these servitors. They're easy enough to take down with a quick fusion rifle to the face. Throughout this fight, make sure you're constantly reapplying stealth, not just for the survivability, but also to refund your grenade energy as the void grenade will rip through any of the adds brave enough to get in your face. After this final wave of Fallen has been killed, the boss will switch from his range attack into a melee mode and will try to rush you down. Keep your composure, pop down a well, and finish what you came here to achieve. Our fastest run on this strike so far is 1544, but with a bit of refining, I'm confident we can get it down to around 12 or 13 minutes. So keep your eye out for that video sometime in the next few days. Thank you all so much for watching today, and as always, I'll see you in the next one, Guardians. We can uh, skip past this. Are, they all, are all the champs dead? I can't see another. Yeah. Are they? Yep, let's go. Go. I don't spare. What the f <laughs> were you thinking would happen there, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I saw like a cruise out of there. <laughs> what the f did you think would happen? <laughs> that one I ran into? <laughs> me too. Double kill. <laughs> that was a botched run.